conditioning here at Everett Waters, and I'm going to be speaking with you all today in reference to the lifts, how the lifts will coincide as far as name association with what you'll see in your workout package, uh, the intensity in which we lift, and again, as you go on the EWCTigerPride.com under the football section of uh, that that page, you'll see the tab that's labeled football. In that football tab will be where your summer off-season workouts are. Get familiar with the movements. Get familiar with the names of the movements because some of these movements you will be doing when you get back. And we will be adding also to a lot of these movements when you, once you return and once you get here for camp. All of our workouts start with a lead-in movement prep warm-up. Uh, after you do your lead-in movement prep warm-up, we transition into our torso training, which will be at the top of the uh, packages that you have. Our warm-ups are always going to be in concert with pre-game style warm-ups. We learn these now so we can do it later. Right now, we're on a standard basketball court, so everything we do, we do will go from here to the half court and we'll jog out to the other side. So you're thinking, 20, you're thinking 10 yards of a movement, another 10 yards of a run if you're on a football field. If you're not on a football field and you're indoors at a basketball court, the elements are different, so we're going, the elements are different, so we're going to extend the distance of the warm-up. So you start with a straight leg kick, which would be straight leg, kick, one, two, three, kick, one, two, three, kick, and then you'll jog out to the other side. Fly through these now. Your knee tuck, grab, pull, straight up. One, two, three. Straight up, go to the toe. Three, go to the toe. You'll do that to half court, and then you'll jog to the other side. First lunge, by the time you guys get here, you'll be acclimated enough to allow just a reverse, but same system. Knee goes up, foot goes back, you sit down into it, push off the front. One, Two on the third leg, you should be going back down into that movement. That third step is the movement. One, two, third step, boom. Quads, just a quad stretch. Grab behind or grab the front. As you see, he's grabbing on one side because some people's range of motion isn't well enough to do it that way. Some people squat, grab on the other side. One, two, three. Grab, pull up. One, two, three. Grab, pull up. Kick and reach. Feet go up. Kick, touch. One, two, three. Kick, go up. One, two, three, and kick, go up. Now, make sure you're switching feet each time. A skip, B skip. A skip is a simple, straight up, hands go with you. B skip, transition out, out. C skip, up, outside, out the leg, and high knee, straight up, both feet, and butt kick, kick it both with the heel. Okay, so the first movement we're gonna talk about are jammers. Uh, jammers are as simple as, you'll either have a T-bar mechanism, which is a mechanism that holds the bar into a straight, uh, rack on the floor or partner up with somebody so that that person can stand on the back of the bar to keep that bar from lifting up off the ground. Everything we'll do will be coming from a balance set with the feet and uh, lower part of the body. You'll do one split down. All you're going to do is your body split in half, meaning the leg that is up, the opposite side of the body is going to work because we're also trying to keep the core engaged. As we do this movement, you'll step underneath the bar to where the bar sits just off of the chest. And all you're gonna do from this movement, keeping your core tight, press straight up into the movement and come back. Some people like to include your glutes as far as coming back with the glutes and pressing through, pressing up at the top. I don't care which one you do at this point, as long as you understand the execution of the jammer lift. And again, pressing straight up, keeping the elbow in, not letting the elbow get outside the body and straight back down. That is what we call a jammer press. All right, now the overhead squat. Simple as put, you'll be in your racks, 
your bar level will come right about to the chest. What we'll do for the overhead squat, to keep it simple, as you walk into your rack, you're gonna load the bar onto your body. Your body creates the, the cage holding that bar up. You want the hands overhead, you want your feet wide and your toes slightly pointed out, and all you're gonna do with this bar in this position is reach up toward the sky as you sit down into the overhead squat and come up. Once again, you must reach with the hands. You must continue to reach toward the sky. If you do not reach toward the sky, as you start to come down, that bar will fade forward. So the object is to reach through the lift as you go over the top. That is the overhead squat in a nutshell. All right, next move we're gonna talk about is a step up. Step up again, weight will be loaded in the front of the body, holding as uh, comfortable as you can. As the weight amps up, it will become more uncomfortable. That's the point of the movement. But it starts as simple as putting one foot up on the bench that I'll designate for you at the time when we're in a group setting. You'll literally go up on my command, up, drive the knee up, point the toe up toward the shin as much as you can. That's sticking it and coming back down to the floor. This foot should never come off the bench during the duration of the reps we're doing. So if I give you three rounds of six or three rounds of eight, this foot will stay on the bench for the entire eight reps and then we'll take this foot down, bring that foot up, switch, and we'll probably even switch weight position at some point. Upright row. The upright row is as simple as uh, trying to put together a multi-joint movement with your lower body being in one place. So you'll come into your racks, Simple, the hand grip will be about an inch to two inches in between each thumb before you wrap around the bar. You'll be in this position, feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent. Once you get your hand position and secure, you'll just take the thumbs underneath the bar and you'll literally come straight up, elbows as high as possible. This movement is supposed to help you with the execution of the power clean. Power clean is our primary movement. You should know how to do power clean before you get here. If not, you will be behind the eight ball as far as execution of certain lifts and getting better as an athlete. So understand the importance of having the fingers in the right position, bringing the elbows up as high as you can, but comfortably not to stress the AC joint. Reverse hand bent row, overhand bent row. Same movement, same movement pattern, but different emphasis as far as the rear delts, your uh, interior delts and the biceps. All bent rows are gonna be done from the floor. We'll start off with the bars on the floor. From this position, feet will be shoulder width apart. I primarily like the reverse hand bent row, meaning the palms are facing forward. Reverse hand, bent, row. You're trying to pull that bar to just at the top of the abs, just below your chest plate. So your aiming point is always going to be right here because we're trying to increase the amount of strength that you have when you engage with somebody and trying to get that person off of you. You need your, low, you need your back to be as strong as you possibly can because we need you to be able to fight through opposition. So again, you're here, palms are facing forward, chest should always be up, overemphasize the chest being out, pull that weight right under those abs and slow back down. Stick it at the top. Deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, that's the R in RDL. You can disregard it, but that's what the R means. Uh, Romanian deadlifts are simply, for me, I call them, they're a more athletic, balanced deadlift. They, we're not power lifters. We're not in here to try to get real big. So the, your conventional way of deadlifting that you've seen on most videos, that's the way it's done. I'm a fan of an overhand, athletic, straight leg deadlift. All you're trying to do is disengage the hips as you take that bar straight down to the floor. You'll come back up, you'll come all the way through it. Same situation as you want to disengage the hips as that bar goes down. Your aiming point is your shoelaces. So always think as that bar, as you disengage and that bar goes down the body, you still again with the chest out, head in a neutral position. So I don't want to see your head here when you're here or there right in the neutral position as you go down. Aiming point is over the shoelaces. Again, knees are gonna be slightly bent as you come up and bring it all the way through. Squeeze your butt at the top. All right, 
walking lunges or forward lunges. The conventional walking forward lunge, which would be what the way it's worded in the workout, is the simplest one and it closely or most closely mimics a true running form. These are important because this is the movement that you get as close to running and walking as you can. Knee comes up, foot comes out, you extend. Now, from this position, understand that with that knee being out and this knee being down, I never want to see the knee go over the toe. I always want the chest to be up and you're literally always trying to stay dropping the body down between the heel and the back toe. You literally want to stay in the middle of the body as you execute a forward lunge. So, from here, if I say three rounds of six per leg, that means one, one. Then you'll go to six. Forward lunge. Lateral lunge, we're thinking adductors, we're thinking lateral movement, we're thinking weight loaded in a number of positions. The majority of the time, weight will be loaded in front of you. Your lateral lunge will be executed two rounds, three rounds, four per leg. Knee comes up, out, as you step now. Both toes are pointed straight. This knee should not be facing out or in. You should be balanced under the body with that weight being up, and you should sit down into your butt as much as you possibly can. Again, knee is behind that toe. From this position, you'll come back up and into, into a stated position. You'll do the same thing on the other leg. Most of the time, we'll execute here, six per leg. One, two, to six, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. That'll be the way you execute a lateral lunge. Okay, front squats are an evaluational lift for me. Most of the time, with a new athlete, incoming freshman transfers, I want to know what type of body position you can get into. You will hear Coach Ruffin tell you a number of times to get into a football position, which will be this position, a ready position, okay? Everyone plays their sport from this position. Baseball, basketball, football, it is the, the number one athletic position. The front squat does the same job. You'll come under, weight will, bar will be racked on the delts, fingers are off the bar. You're not you're looking for the hands to hold the bar. The body is holding the bar. Again, feet are wide, toes are slightly pointing out, and you're just trying to sit down as low as you can into it and back up. Front squats are done, it's that simple. I just wanna see how well you can get with the elbows off the body, down as low as you can get, and back up. That shows me your upper body range of motion, your hip mobility, and if you can stay in a steady, stable, and strong position, the lower your center of gravity goes. Front squat. GHR glute ham raise. Uh, this is a GHR machine under the pretense that you all will be working out in facilities that have these basic things. None of this stuff is overly complicated. None of these movements are something that you cannot do in the most basic of gyms. The GHR is that simple. The feet should be flat on this platform. This portion of your leg should be touching the upper part of the pad. Feet flat, legs touching, knees should be all the way forward on that part of the pad. Until you get more advanced, or I know the strength of your hamstrings, everything will be done without weight. All I'm trying to get you to do is come out until you feel that big, 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 big pull in the hamstrings and you'll come back up. That's how we'll start. We'll start with that minimal amount of motion. After we advance a little bit more, we'll take you down more and the more further you can go down, the more sturdy, the more confident I am in your hamstring strength. After we get to that, we'll start incorporating what we'll call a back extension into the same movement, which will be coming out all the way down and being able to come all the way back up safely, securely, and without injury. This is all for injury prevention, GHR. All right, leg extension, leg curl. Again, every gym 
should have a leg extension slash leg curl machine. Different ways to execute it, but the normal leg extension leg curl, you'll sit in the machine, where it'll be loaded right on the shins. It's just as simple as kicking the leg up forward, making sure that toe again is pointed toward the shin. All of the emphasis will be on the front of the leg, quads, and all you'll do is execute whatever the number is that I have. And all of them should say per leg. Per leg meaning six per leg. Stay on that leg until you finish all of the reps, then switch to the other leg. Don't vary, in, don't vary the movement and the leg. Stick in that leg first. After you complete the six, then you'll go to the other leg. Leg extension. Leg curls are a hamstring movement. Understand that the emphasis and the purpose of the quadriceps in motion is to help you stop. They're the brakes. Your hamstrings are the gas. These are responsible for your speed. You see a track athlete, chances are they have huge hamstrings because their point is to run as fast as you can in a linear uh, running path. So, hamstring curls are very important. Any hamstring movements from deadlifts to uh, laying leg curls, all of these emphasize, all of these emphasize speed and motion going forward. You'll lay in whatever machine you have at your disposal. Now, if you do not have one, you'll simply take a weight. You'll put that weight in between your feet. With this weight being in between your feet, this is one way to do a leg curl without the actual machine. You'll come down, hold in that weight. You'll bring that weight all the way back up. You'll go again for however many reps I have designated. If you do not have a leg curl machine, you are in the gym and you have a leg curl machine, it's just as simple as setting your weight, adjusting the machine to your body, and in that same position, you'll do leg curls for whatever the designated amount of reps are in the workout. That will be the laying leg curl with the machine and without it. Peck flies. Dumbbell. Pick, fly. Many people do these wrong because, for one, they let the arms get way, way, way out and they never bend the elbow. You want to always simulate as if you're hugging up a tree. Laying flat, slightly, slight bend in the elbows, meaning the weight should start not touching. All you're doing to do from there is come down until you feel all of your chest basically open up. You should feel all of your muscle fibers within the chest open up as wide. If you go past that point, it will get so stressful and it will begin to hurt. None of these movements should hurt. From that position, you'll just come right back and then you'll allow them to touch, come off, back out, back down, touch, reset, come out, back up. That'll be your pec fly. Shrugs, another big movement. When we do our power cleans, we'll start them off, in, we'll start it out in phases. You'll start with a shrug, you'll go to a high pull, you'll go to a quick flip, and then you'll actually be going to a hand clean, then we'll process you down to doing an actual power clean. The shrug portion of it all, or your traps, weight is up, thumb again, thumb length off of the body, and all you're trying to do, shrug straight up. Shrug straight up. You're trying to stick it at the top of the movement. Of course, it will be much more stressful because the amount of weight will be a lot more than this. Our O-line, D-line guys, we all start out with 225, which is 245 on each side. Skill position guys run at about 185, but the majority of all our skill position guys can start at 225. So understand, it will be intense. You're trying to get the shoulders up, but do not get to the top of the movement and stress yourself. You're trying to get up and down, up and down, sticking it at the top, but at no point should you feel blood rush to your head. You feel blood rushing to your head, you're doing it, you're putting too much emphasis on that portion of it and you're holding it too long. Up, come down, up, come down. It's about a second to two seconds, stick at the top of the movement and then relax. That is your shrug. Right? Your front lat pull down is done in a lat pull down machine. Again, it's a simple 
loading, making sure that that bar pad is on the legs and it is keeping your lower body stuck in the actual machine. So chances are you'll bring the bars down to you, your body should be stuck in the machine, and all you're doing from that movement is pulling the bar straight down with the chest being up, and all you're trying to get that bar is just below the neck. If you come all the way down to the sternum, which is what a lot of people do, you will get more of a lat emphasis out of the movement. But for starters, let's just get everybody down to the position just below the chin, right above, right above your clavicle, right above your collarbone. Once you get there, we'll relax and come back up. Just like a pull up, just like a lot of other things we'll do to get the lat strong. Right now, I'm trying to get your body acclimated until you get with me. Once you get with me, then we'll work on that other three to four inches that actually gets you down to your stomach. That is your front lat pull down. Okay, your split jerk and military press. For all of my guys starting out, if you come from a weightlifting culture, I will know it when you arrive. So if you have not done a split jerk before, we will start you out with basically what we call a shoulder press or a military press, which is the bar right here in front. So you'll basically go into your racks, load your bars, knees slightly bent, and you're just gonna press that bar overhead and back down. Emphasis on when you come down, I never wanna see your wrist go inside your elbow. I always need you at 90 degrees with the elbow, with the wrist being outside of the elbow. So when we go inside too close and do this movement, we're putting a lot of pressure on the elbow joint. I don't want to have any bursa sac or synovial fluid issues with the elbow. So again, we keep the hands out wide, making sure that when you come down, your body's in a comfortable position and back up. That's your shoulder press, military press, and we're transitioning to a split jerk from that movement. Okay, split jerks. Split jerks are done in coincide, to coincide with a hand clean, so to speak. We'll hand clean the bar up to our bodies. The split jerks are done here. Meaning, this foot is out, knee is still behind the toe. This back foot should be fanned, the back foot should be, knee should be inside and the toes should be fanned out in the shoe. You should feel your toes, all of them, in your shoe, out covering the floor from pinky to big toe. Now, again, this is a multi-joint movement, a power movement. If you're not good at that movement, Take on military press, shoulder press, same thing. Take on that with more knee bend to start out. And then once you get with me, we'll get you split jerk ready. That'll be the split jerk. Be careful, be smart. Don't overload without knowing exactly what you're doing. Okay, so uh, those are, that's the way we do our workouts. Movement prep, warm up, so to speak, starts it. You're going to your torso training or your core work. After that, you're going to your lift. Once you complete your lift, you should go into your condition. Again, no uphill or downhill running on your lower days. So any times you touch any days, you do anything lower, meaning from the hips down, no uphill or downhill running. We've already torn down those muscle fibers, so I do not want you to go into heel work because that is stressing those same muscle fibers that we've broken down, and I don't want to increase the chance of injury because being available is the number one priority. These workouts are also designed to be done with a partner. If you have someone at home, it doesn't matter if they're in shape, more so matters that you have a spotter. Your upper body movements, your bench presses, and <clears throat> those types of movements need to be done with someone, otherwise you will not get as strong as you need to get. There is no strength without struggle. This stuff should hurt. It should be demanding on the heart. It should be demanding on the body. And if you can get done with a workout and go and play a game of basketball, did not work out hard enough. So understand that when you get with me, I am going to work you out hard. We are here to win. The focus is on getting better, being well trained, being in condition. We win all our games in the fourth quarter. We cannot jeopardize or be at risk of not having guys performing well in the fourth. Get acclimated, Understand the workouts, learn the workouts, learn the warm-ups, because all of these things will be things we need to do, hitting the ground running. When you arrive, again, I'm Marcus Richardson. I'm the head strength and conditioning coach. I'll be with you for the next four years of your life. Get ready.